Hi, good day a bit to everyone watching. My name is Aina Masarah Mama Azizi and I am from Chemical Engineering Department. My final year project is hydrogel production from cellulose biomass for biomedical purposes. This project is advised and supervised by Dr. Roridah Binti Osman. So today is my proposal defense. Alright, before we move further into my presentation today, let's have the overview of my presentation. First, we will start with background, followed by the problem statement. After that, we will go to the objectives and scope of study. Then, we will have my literature reviews and research methodology, followed by timeline and milestones. Lastly, we will have the expected results as my conclusion, and we will have Q&A session on a separate sessions. Alright, now let's begin with the overall view of my project. Orang kata, tak kenal maka tak cinta. So, my project is basically about biomass, particularly napier grass and bamboo. From these two biomass, we will extract its cellulose and we will do some treatment. And we will get something like this. It is a treated cellulose powder. At this stage, we will do characterization just to ensure that all non-cellulosic components are all removed. Once we have obtained the powder, we will do cross-linking to form hydrogels. As you can see from my slide, hydrogels can be in form of amorphous and also crystalline. Once we have produced hydrogels, we will send this for characterizations and, and analysis such as FTIR, SEM, non-bacterial tests and also the test for uh, moisture content. Now we already have the clear view of my overall project. Now let's go into the specific. First, we will start with biomass. What is biomass? Biomass is renewable organic material that originates from plants as well as residues from agricultural harvesting, cited by Pang. Cellulosic biomass is the most abundant bioresource produced on earth. So let's have a look into the napier, napier grass and bamboo itself. Napier grass or the local call it Rupot Gajah or its scientific name is Penicetum purpureum. It has a very strong adaptability and wide availability especially in Malaysia itself. It has a very short production time and a very low cost. Bamboo Estimated uh, 59 species that is planted in Peninsular Malaysia with Buluh Dinding is planted the most. It is almost 97%. Bulu dinding is used to make handicrafts, satay skewers, and also toothpicks. And when I say cheap, it is very cheap. Um, napier grass can be obtained only for 25 cents per kilo, while bamboo residue can be obtained free from SMEs. Now, let's look into what is cellulose. According to Horn and Ryush, cellulose is a polymer made up of glucose units joined together by condensation polymerization. Also, cellulose comprises 38-50% to of cellulosic biomass, while others are hemicellulose and lignin. Now, you may ask, from where we can find the cellulose? Or, what is hemicellulose? Or, what is lignin? Alright, let's have a look. You can find uh, cellulose in plants, in its leaves, stems, and even their roots because it is consists. Uh, it is uh, it is what made the uh, plant cell wall. So let's have a look into the cell wall. We can find cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin coexist together in microfibrils. This is the cellulose chain and as you can see, it is uh, made up of beta-glucose monomer which is linked together by beta-1,4-glycosidic link. As you can see, it is a very straight chain. Uh, it is a very straight chain making it able to be packed close together and making them a very rigid structure. And to compare with starch, cellulose is more crystalline as N is in N insoluble in water. It is also tough and fibrous and water insoluble polysaccharide. And just to share a fun fact, cellulose consists of three fractions namely alpha cellulose, beta cellulose and also gamma cellulose. A high content of alpha cellulose indicates uh, a good quality in terms of stability of the finished material. Alright, so in my previous slides, we already know about the biomass and also cellulose. Now let's look into the hydrogel. Hydrogel is 3D network of hydrophilic polymers that can swell in water 
while maintaining the structure due to chemical or physical cross-linking of individual polymer chains. To have a better understanding, let's look in this graphics. So imagine the black curved lines is our cellulose chains. Initially, it is not connected to each other, but when we cross-link it, it, uh, it forms a new network that can hold subst substance together. In this case, in case of hydrogel, it can hold subs, uh, it can hold water without um, without dissolving it. And then, we can classify hydrogels according to many ways, but in this presentation, I will only focus on source and also cross-linking. According to source, there are three types of hydrogels, which are natural, synthetic, and hybrid. So obviously, for my project, it is a natural source of hydrogel. For cross-linking, it is either chemical or physical. Chemical cross-linking is permanent while physical is uh, reversible. It is due to uh, the permanent junctions or transient junctions that is formed during physical uh, cross-linking. And because of the many advantages of hydrogels, it already implemented widely in biomedical. The One of the Few of the applications are in contact lenses, wound dressings, drug delivery, and also tissue engineering. It is because um, the water that is inside the gel matrix can provide moist conditions that may uh, that may promote um, wound and scars healing. All right, done with the project background. Let's move into the problem statement. For this project, we have two problems, which are common synthetic hydrogels are for, uh, fundamentally different from biological gels and secondly, traditional wound dressings causes trauma on skin epidemies. As mentioned, so let's have a look um, in the first problem first. As mentioned before, there are three types of hydrogels. It can be natural, um, synthetic or hybrid. And synthetic hydrogels such as acrylamide hydrogels or PEG hydrogels are uh, usually quite different from naturals. It can be stiffer and less porous than natural hydrogels. Natural hydrogels are fibrous in architecture and porous, which allows easy transport to entire cells. That is why for this project, we would we opt for natural hydrogels instead of a synthetic one. Second problem, traditional wound dressing cause trauma on skin epidemies. Now imagine the skin uh, the image here is your skin and we put um, bandage directly on the wound. Because of it adhering to the wound, we, it may cause trauma when we strip off newly formed epidemies, right? So, hydrogels may combat this. And another one, the traditional wound dressings may cause um, skin maceration if it's not changed regularly. Alright, now let's move into the objectives, I mean the goals of this project. We have four, but first, to extract cellulose from napegras and bamboo and characterize them. Second is to study the properties of hydrogel produced from biomass. Third is to determine the effects of different ratio of cross-linkers and temperature to hydrogel performance. And lastly, to determine which hydrogel, either amorphous or crystalline, from the extracted cellulose is suitable for medical usage. Moving on to the scope of study, I have three, but the first one is research on related topics. At this part of the project is when I look for papers to know more about biomass, to know more about cellulose, cross-linking, hydrogels, and biomedic uh, my, uh, biomedical engineering. This is done for me to have a better view of this project and to extract the methods that I can do for my experiments. The next scope is cellulose and hydrogel samples preparations. Now I have known the, method, uh, the methodology that I can do for my experiment, I will proceed with the samples preparation itself. And once the pre uh, samples are done, we will send the uh, samples to, uh, for characterizations, tests, and analysis. In addition to the tests and characterizations, we will also do biocompatibility tests to support the success of cellulose-based hydrogels in biomedical engineering. Okay, moving forward from scope of study, let's move into the literature review. 
Now on this slide is actually the summary version of the literature review that I have done. Uh, I put three literature uh, in which I compare to each other about uh, its hydrogel preparations and also the, uh, the characterization that they have documented in, the, in their paper. So from their papers, I picked and mix and match or the procedures or the methodology that I would like to use for my final year project. And as can be seen in the last row, uh, my final year project, it would be a cellulose hydrogel, napier or bamboo based. Uh, the process involved would be a single network using freeze thawing method. My cross linkers is epichlorohydrin ECH and the characterization that I will do is FTIR. SEM swelling test, tensile strength, and non bacterial test. Okay, from the tissue reviews, I have extracted the methodology that I need to carry out for my experiments. So there are two parts. The first one is cellulose extraction, the second part is the hydrogel formations. So our focus will be the hydrogel formations. So for cellulose extraction, it will be a brief, um, I will go through this briefly. So the first one is we will grind bamboo and apple grass, followed by the waxing process. After the resting, we will delignify them and filter it before we go for the alkali hydrolysis and also acid hydrolysis. Once we are done with acid hydrolysis, we will filter the uh, sample and also we will dry to obtain the cellulose powder. Alright, now is the main focus of this experiment which is the hydrogel sample preparation. We will start with weighing 3 grams of cellulose powder that we extracted earlier. And then we will add 97 grams of sodium hydroxide urea water mixture. And then we will stir it for 5 minutes. After, it, after that, we will freeze it at negative 20 degrees C for at least 12 hours. And then we will thaw it and stir at room temperature. Following that, we will add 1 ml of epichlorohydrin ECH into the solution and give it a well mix using magnetic um, stirrer for at least 30 minutes. Then, we will put it into oven at 60 degrees C for 30 minutes. Also, uh, after we have obtained several samples, we will all send them for characterizations such as FTIR, SEM, non-bacterial tests and tensile strength. Also extracted from the literature review is the swelling ratio formula as shown in the slides. For this project, we will be manipulating two things. The first one is the ECH to cellulose solution ratio and second is stirring temperature. So for ratio, we will go for 1 to 100, 5 to 100 and 10 to 100. While for stirring temperature, First, we will go for 30 degrees C, followed by 40 degrees C, and lastly, 50 degrees Celsius. Now, let's have a look on my timeline and my milestones. Uh, so, in blue is the important events of, the com of my final year projects, uh, combining both FYP1 and FYP2. While the star is the milestones that I would like to achieve throughout these projects. So this project starts with uh, research and also the preparations of uh, materials and equipments. So once uh, the materials and equipments have been set up, uh, we will proceed with the cellulose extraction and treatment. Once cellulose is extracted, we will directly proceed with the hydrogel preparation. Once hydrogel samples are done, we will send them for characterizations, tests and analysis. From that, we will do some analysis and we will document it in the report and the report will then finally, uh, finally be ready for submission. Uh, now is the gun chart of my FYP1 where currently we, uh, we are in week 5. Coming to the end of my uh, presentation which is the conclusion, 
which I put the expected results of this project. The first one, it is proof possible to obtain high cellulose yield percentage from napier grass and bamboo through chlorination, alkali and acid treatment. Secondly, is absorption may decreases as cross-link agents and stirring temperature increases. And lastly, cellulose-based hydrogel have excellent biocompatibility and biodegradability. Now, these three are all expected based on the literature review that I have done before. So, with that, it is the end of my presentation. The last two slides is my list of reference. Thank you very much for your time. Have a nice day ahead. Thank you so much. Bye.